Hello students, I'm your host Hira Imtiaz and this is the second program of MBA Coal Management course. Today our subject expert is Mr. Sai Chaudhary. Welcome sir. Thank you. Now expert, could you please give us a brief review of the last program? Sure, the last program dealt with basic concepts of management which are Organization People working together and coordinating their actions to achieve specific goals. Goal A desired future condition that the organization seeks to achieve. Management The process of using organizational resources to achieve the organization's goals. Level of management we normally divide these levels into three. First line of managers is where the work takes place. Second are intermediary and third are the top management people. Roles of manager. The managers play various roles. For example, they have a decisional role, communicator's role, leader's role and negotiator's role. Functions of manager. Planning, controlling, organizing, leading. Last, resources. Organizational assets that include people, machinery, raw materials, information, financial capital. And now today's program. Expert, could you please give us an overview of today's topic? Today's topic deals with the theory and history of management. It includes Evolution of management theory Scientific management theory Administrative management Bureaucratic management Behavioral management The Hawthorne studies Theory X and Theory Y let us study in detail when it began with its ways to satisfy customer by changing of machinery to produce goods and managers' efforts to increase the efficiency of workers. Scientific thinking started in the last half of 19th century. Although it existed from ancient times, but as a regular line of philosophy, it developed in the last half of uh, 19th century when starting from Ernst Mach uh, and uh, John Dewey and Bertrand Russell and later on Hans Reichenbach. These are the major names that come to mind when we uh, talk of uh, scientific thinking. And then this same thinking or methods of thinking were applied to various other fields for example, uh, to sociology, to psychology, and uh, similarly to business management and industrial management also, because those were the days when business and industry were developing, and uh, thinkers also started uh, applying these lines of thinking to business and industry. What were the hallmarks of scientific management? The hallmarks were job specialization, measuring performance, setting targets, and forcing the workers, or disciplining rather, disciplining the workers to achieve those targets, and uh, also using efficient methods of production and developing allied discipline disciplines like uh, uh, accounting and uh, auditing and uh, monitoring and also controlling through various scientific methods. It need not be overemphasized that organization is deeply connected with management. Yes, organization and management developed together and the basic emphasis of management was on efficient production and efficient management of business 
to increase profits. Actually, the organizations had always been existing, but uh, from 14th century onward, business and industry slowly developed, and in uh, the 19th century, it developed uh, at a great speed because technology had been introduced. Now, Adam Smith was the first one uh, who emphasized the division of labor, and uh, also later on, uh, Frederick W. Taylor and other thinkers started applying methods to production and business. Scientific management thinking developed during all these phases. It developed from organizational environment to management science and then behavioral management and administrative management and later on it all culminated in scientific management. Who were the most prominent contributor to the rise of the idea of scientific management? Frederick Wilson Taylor is said to be the first scientific thinker in uh, management. He defined scientific management. I believe he belonged to late 19th century. What were his contributions? Taylor was a mechanical engineer and he applied the methods of efficient production to workers by studying their method of production, even by studying their body movements and also the what effect the target setting had on them and how could they be moved to achieve the targets of production. And after studying this, he would redesign the method of production and also the methods of handling tools and implements and by economizing on the body movements, saving time and thus giving a greater production in the same time and also by giving them certain targets of production which they would uh, be compelled to achieve. However, there were some problems with implementations of Taylor's idea. What were those problems? The problems can be said to be being too materialistic because the managers, when implementing Taylor's ideas, started overemphasizing production and greater profits and profits and profits only. Now, these profits were not shared by the workers and uh, they were given targets and they were given certain movements to economize uh, their body movements and to produce more and more in the same time, which resulted in their repetitive movements, which made their work fatiguing and dull and boring and specialized jobs particularly were very boring. Workers ended up distrusting scientific management and they started uh, sometimes consciously and purposely underperforming. Management responded with increased use of machines. Who were the next in line? Next in line are a husband and wife they are known as Gilbreths, Frank and Lillian Gilbreth. They refined Taylor's methods and they made many improvements to time and motion study. They even used cameras to record the workers' body movements and their hand movements and uh, later on analyzed these so that to make them more efficient and more economical. These are called time and motion studies and uh, they would uh, 
uh, record and break down each action into its components and later on would uh, experiment with the better ways to perform the same movements. Reorganize these actions, they would reorganize these actions to make them more efficient. Gilbreth also studied fatigue problems related to lighting, heating and other workers' issues. Apart from these proponents of scientific management, what other school of thoughts are known in management? One that held sway for quite some time was the administrative management. It sought to create an organization that leads to both efficiency and effectiveness. Marx Weber developed the concept of bureaucracy. He was a German sociologist and a philosopher also, a thinker, and uh, he emphasized the development of formal systems of organizations with the uh, uh, lines of uh, mm, command, with lines of uh, authority, and uh, the authority specifically and definitely defined at various levels and also how to organize things so that uh, they become more and more uh, impersonal. And this he called bureaucratic management and he, according to him, bureaucratic management was an ideal management because it was impersonal and secular and based on uh, science of management and administration. It appears from the next slide that Max Weber codified the thought of his predecessors in the form of bureaucratic principles. Yes, according to Weber's philosophy, a bureaucracy should have fixed rules to run the system. It must have a system of task relationships, which means who is connected to whom and through whom, if not directly. Bureaucracy has a system of reward and punishment based on evaluation by other members of community. It must have a hierarchy so that the extent of authority of each member is clearly known the key points of bureaucracy are The first one is authority. Authority is the power to hold people accountable for their actions. Positions in the firm should be held based on performance, not social contacts. Position duties are clearly identified, people should know what is expected of them. Lines of authority should be clearly identified, workers know who reports to whom. Rules, standard operating procedures, that is SOPs and norms used to determine how the firm operates. Sometimes these lead to red tape and other problems. It only means that these salient features of bureaucracy are not all positive. Negative traits like being inflexible and hidebound and tied to targets are actually sometimes considered as the negative points of bureaucracy and uh, people thought that uh, this is not only impersonal but too impersonal and therefore dehumanized the workers. But this emphasis on over discipline continued for quite some time till the various schools of thought started uh, 
emphasizing the motivational and human levels of uh, workers' lives and making them participants in business and industry rather than only productive instruments. Similarly, as Henry Fayol developed 14 principles. These 14 principles are considered to be applicable to all levels of management and in a way they are considered to be the basis of uh, scientific management. These principles are division of labor, authority, unity of command, line of authority, centralization, unity of direction, equity, order, initiative, discipline, remuneration of personnel, stability of tenure, general interest over individual interest, and last